video, we're going to show a way to model physical connectors and physical uh, cables and harnesses. So to do that, we'll show an example by creating some structure, the system and the subsystem A and subsystem B. These subsystems are going to have proxy ports, the sender and the receiver. We'll create an internal block diagram to show the connections between the subsystems, specifically the sender and the receiver proxy ports, and then we're going to create an ICD table, which is going to tabulate all of the connections between subsystems. You can note that you will see one row for the ICD table per connection that is created within the internal block diagram. So we'll first start by creating several interface blocks, which will type the proxy ports, subsystem A interface and subsystem B interface. The subsystem A interface is going to be kind of a logical naming convention. These guys are going to have references or reference properties underneath them for the electrical connector. So we can type that electrical connector by the actual part number, which in this case we've called male three pin connector and female three pin connector. And then we're gonna jump down from the connector level down to the pinout level. We'll create several new blocks, the 12 VDC and the ground. These are going to type the reference properties that we've called pin one and pin two within our male three pin connector block and our female three pin connector block. Now we can go into our internal block diagram and show the reference properties which we just created. Once we show them, we can add connections between the reference properties. You can see that we've added a connection between the pin one of the male three pin connector to the pin one of the female three pin connector, as well as the pin two to pin two. Now we can go back to our ICD table and look at the output. Rows two and three of the table are showing our pinout level connections. If desired, you can show some directionality with provided and required by going to your pinout level reference properties, right clicking and going to feature direction. You can also go back up to your interface blocks that you've created, the subsystem A and subsystem B interfaces, and add a reference property mechanical connector. You can type that mechanical connector reference property with the cable or harness part number that is required. You might also want to connect an attached file to the part numbered cable or harness and you can do this by finding the cable or harness part number in your containment tree, right clicking it, go to create element, and then go to attached file. Now let's add in some requirements. We've got three different requirements, provide five amps, require five amps, and require ground connection that we're going to add to this model. After we've added the requirement text, we're gonna go ahead and add satisfy linkages between the physical pinout and the requirements that we just created. And then we're going to show them on our ICD table with a meta chain. Please feel free to slow the video down if you need help on where to click in order to create these satisfy linkages. Our goal is to be able to see the requirement which satisfies the physical pinout within the ICD table. To enable this, we're going to create a customization within a profile diagram. We're going to make the connector meta class the customization target by dragging it onto the connector customization. We're going to create several derived property specifications. The first one being connector end A custom. We're going to go into the specification by double clicking and then into the expression Within the expression, we're going to add a script. We'll ensure that our language is set to OCL 2.0. And then within that, we will add self dot in arrow sorted by ID arrow at one. I'll clean it up by removing the spaces and then clicking OK. So I'm going to add a multiplicity 
of 0 to 1 to connector end A custom. Then I'm going to copy and paste that drive property and change the copied one's name from connector end A to connector end B. Now we'll go ahead and update the script accordingly. All I had to do was update the one value to a two. That would be taking the second value in the array, which would be connector end B, as opposed to the first in the array, which would be connector end A. We're going to add several derived property specifications. One of them is going to be connector end A role. The second one is going to be connector end B role. These are both going to be meta chains, which are going to be very similar. Within my meta chain, I'm trying to go from the connector to the derived property, which I made from before. That's not showing up in my dropdown. I'm not be able to see connector end A custom. So what I'm going to do is go to view and then refresh. So now if I go and try to create that meta chain again, you will see connector end A custom within the dropdown. So I'll select that and then I'll go from connector end to roll and click OK. So now I'll do the same process with the connector end B roll. I'll go into the expression, go into the meta chain, go to connector, then go into connector and B custom, add a new row, go from connector end to roll and click OK and close. We can now refresh the model and then we can go over to our ICD and change our columns to add the connector end B custom, connector end A roll, and connector end A custom. If it doesn't show up, connector end B roll doesn't show up, then you can go back into your columns and then search for it manually. Now I'm just reformatting the table to change the columns around and hiding some of the columns that I don't find helpful. Now we're going to go back to our customization and we're going to add two last derived property specifications, interface side A requirements and interface side B requirements. We're going to add meta chains to both. So we'll go into the first expression and start with connector. We'll go to connector end A role. We'll insert a new row, go from reference property to client dependency, insert a new row, go from satisfy to supplier. We can get, click OK and close. So we're going to do exactly the same thing with the B side except for we'll go from connector to connector in B role. Then when we insert a new row, go to reference property, client dependency, new row, satisfy and supplier. That's going to remain the same. We click OK and then close. We'll go back to our ICD table, we'll refresh, and then we will show the columns that we just created. To do this, we'll go to Columns, Select Columns, then we'll type in REQ for requirements, and then we'll find our Interface Side A requirements and Interface Side B requirements. We can go ahead and hide some of the columns that aren't helpful to us and drag them around to put them in the right order. We can easily see in the table which requirement goes with which pin. Then we can go back to our ICD and remove the connector between the proxy ports and you'll just see the pinout level connections. We'll go back to the internal block diagram and make a connection between the electrical connector on the male side to the electrical connector on the female side and look at that within the table. Now we'll address the cable or harness. We'll go ahead and make the cable harness a part property and we can show that within our internal block diagram. We have different ways to model this. We'll first show that you can connect the electrical connector to the cable harness. This will create two rows in your ICD table. Another method we'll show is to not use the part property at all, but just make a connection between the mechanical connector from subsystem A to the mechanical connector of subsystem B. With this method, you will only have one row in your ICD table. You could also 
make a connection between the mechanical connector to the cable harness part property back to the mechanical connector of subsystem B. Really the sky is the limit here, so do what makes sense for your project. So you'll see there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Our preferred method is probably to not have the cable harness as a part property, but to just create that direct connection between the mechanical connector to the other mechanical connector. We hope this video helps.